Gun Bunch Strong and the Gun Bunch Strong Nasty, as well as any other formation in which the running back and three receiving options are to one side of the quarterback, have been extremely meta in Madden. And the reason for that is that it turns off match rules associated with quarters, palms, cover six, and cover nine. However, those last two coverages that I just said, being cover six and cover nine, have some hidden tricks that you can utilize within them because today's video is going to break down the rule set and really the trick of the hook zones in cover two base defenses. So let's go ahead and get straight into this. This is going to be a seminar style video here today for you guys. I'm going to be teaching a lot about the rules of the yellow zones found in a cover two. So make sure that you guys are liking this video, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. We are riding a crazy wave right now on the Zan Madden YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all the support. Let's go ahead and keep it rolling. So we're going to start off with basically how hook zones can interact with one another. Basically, hook zones found in a cover two play tend to have ESP, meaning that if I were to not use either Halley or Edmonds here in this example, what you're actually gonna notice is that if I have for instance, this baseline defense in which this vertical hook is on the right side and I man up Howley on the running back, for instance. What will actually occur when the ball is snapped is if the running back actually releases to the flat, what is going to end up occurring is you're gonna actually see a swap off or what some players are referring to in the community right now as a push call. A push call is one in which you have a player that maybe is marked on a player across the formation. And rather than giving up the leverage of Howley being several steps away from a throw to the flat to Pacheco, this player will take the throw to the flat by basically assuming the coverage role, which is the man-to-man -man role on the running back. And then Howley will be able to roll into the zone coverage assignment that is to the side that the running back is releasing to. I'm going to run kind of a swing and I'm going to run a flat and you see that with that particular example the guy that was actually manned up to the running back swapped off and this is basically what we would call a push call now in the past i've actually taught this as what i call a lane exchange because we're going to get into this in a minute as to how it pertains being able to use your defensive lineman in this facet but what you're going to see here is that with howley basically being out leveraged he's going to say you know what you see the pointing animation he's going to tell his teammate hey take that i'll play the zone that pushes the assignment over to our formerly vertical hook linebacker Edmonds, who can now take this throw out of the backfield if he were to wheel off the sideline. Meanwhile, Howley is going to be able to slide into that vertical hook roll, taking away the throw in the seam to the tight end on the slot curl route. Now, this lane exchange is actually quite interesting because one of the things you'll notice with this is that it actually transcends these coverages as a whole. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take Derwin James, I'm gonna man him up on the running back from the backside. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna basically do a double push call, meaning that if the running back does swing, Derwin James is going to assume the role of Howley. Howley is going to assume the role of Derwin James, but then because we have Edmonds to the outside of Howley, then you're gonna have Howley swap off with Edmonds and Howley will take the role in the vertical hook. So that seems like a lot, but basically what happens is Derwin is going to drop into the mid read, Howley is gonna drop into the vert hook, and Edmonds is going to take the running back. So right here, when we snap this ball, you should see push, push, and actually right there, we only had one push, but we'll start to get into double lane exchange or double push call here momentarily, especially as we talk about some of the match stuff that exists. But this essentially is a way that you're going to be able to kind of take your cover two base defenses and turn them into something stronger. Now, with this particular defense right here, this is actually something that's important to know. I'm in the over G. This is my base defense, which you guys can find over on my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg. Because that slot corner is actually a safety, the push call as it pertained that defense that I just ran was a little wonky. What I want to do here is call that exact same defense against the exact same play but this time i'm going to be taking a nickel corner and doing this so again you're going to see here with this push call you should see night train swap off with Edmund, swap off with howley and you should see this basically work as kind of like a double exchange if you will so we snap this you see the push you see the push and that's exactly what occurred and you saw that 
basically with that play, we ended up with Night Train becoming the mid read, and then the mid read became the vertical hook, and then the vertical hook took the running back. So here's the replay. If we're looking at that second level, you see Night Train is going to immediately say, hey, push call. Then you're gonna have the middle linebacker Edmonds who was in the mid read say, okay, I gotta take the running back. Oh, hey, I've got help in the hook. Howley, you take the running back. So now Edmonds flows from the mid read out into the right vertical hook. And the player that was on the backside now becomes the new mid read. So you see how Night Train Lane was able to drop into a mid read here on this example. Now, ignore the fact that I'm, you know, not using my assignment here on this play. But obviously, with this, the key is that you cannot be user on any of the players involved in the lane exchanges because the game does not assume that you as a defensive player know these rules that are built in. If it's three AI players, you're good to go. But if I were to say user Howley in this example, what would actually end up occurring is basically a double or a single lane exchange in which basically the only player that could be involved in this will take the running back and it's not going to pass that roll off to me because i'm one of those three players that it would normally involve the the swapping of the coverage assignments so basically what we're saying here is that if you take a player in a cover two base defense and you man him up across the field on the running back it will push the assignments in a staggered way all the way out to the sideline and keep that nice balance to the coverage so you see again because i'm using howley on the right side it knows it can only swap night train and edmonds and it's not going to say swap edmonds with my user because if i blow that assignment i'm going to be wondering what happened with the game so it's only going to basically play to the amount of assignments that are logical for it to swap it's not going to ask too much of you as a user so basically if you want to do this stay out of the way don't use your players in between the swap offs or the push of the uh, coverage assignments if you've made it this far in the video that means you probably enjoy high level madden conversation i would strongly urge you guys to head over to my strategy website gridirongameplans.gg where topics like this are discussed nearly every single week in our vault where we keep you on top of the pro metas or the most effective tactics available in Madden, why the pro players do what they do and how you guys can beat those tactics when you face players online that also mimic those tactics. On top of that, you guys will unlock every single offensive and defensive game plan on the website of which there are 10 available to you at no additional cost. And you'll get access to our members only discord where you guys can converse with over 2000 other members of the gridiron game plans community and attend our lab sessions every single week. You guys unlock everything all inclusive for $9.95 per month make sure you guys check it out so this is really simple stuff but the awesome part about this is that you actually can kind of utilize this with linemen as well so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this pass coverage Bo Jackson that I'm playing a defensive end and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him into a vertical hook now because I already have a right vertical hook let's go ahead and just man up this a receiver with Halley. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to man up Edmonds on Pacheco. Now, what you're going to see here in this example is if Pacheco releases to the flat, you're going to see a push in which our linebacker becomes the right vertical hook and that defensive end took the running back out of the backfield. Because we have a player in a coverage assignment closer to the running back and he's releasing to the flat, the game says, you know what? Let me go ahead and swap that. Now you see what happens is the player that was originally supposed to drop into the vertical hook takes the running back to the flat. And then the player who was manned on the running back assumes the role of the player that swapped, which was a right vertical hook. Now, if you know anything about Madden, you know middle linebackers do not get vertical hooks as hot route assignments. If I were to go back and show you the adjustments that I have available for Tremaine Edmonds, you see I've got hook curls, curl flats, mid read zones, middle thirds, spies, hard flats, man coverage, and blitz. But we don't have the vertical hook assignment. If I were to put Reggie White into a vertical hook and man up the running back with Edmonds, you're now going to see a right vertical hook from Tremaine Edmonds. And this is how you're gonna be able to pick off slot curls, basically with a cross zone style defense. This is a really cool adjustment that you guys can make within a cover two base defense. Now, unfortunately, this rule set does not apply directly to cover three as much as many would think it would. Uh, so if I were to go ahead and show you here, if I have this hook curl and man up the running back, you would think, okay, well, Howley and Edmonds should still swap. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run a, a flat, and you'll see here, we snap this ball. 
You do get a little bit of a push call here, and he does assume the right vertical hook. But the thing that you guys need to be aware of is that cover three gets really wonky in this regard because um, sometimes you'll notice that, like, if you're expecting like the curl flat to kind of do something with this, it, it actually ends up being kind of goofy. So just be careful with the cover three style defense with this. Um, this is a nice little cheeky way to kind of get a left side linebacker into a right hook uh on the fly if you know the running backs releasing to the flat but just be careful i don't want you guys to blow coverages now where this is actually super neat is going to be against your bunch strong meta a lot of players say there is no way to play match against bunch strong and for the most part they're right but this is really cool because all these bunch strong formations do a pretty good job of stressing the flats um, and I want to kind of show you guys how this would operate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose a split field coverage, which is cover six or cover nine. For those that don't know what that means, cover six is basically cover four to one side of the field and cover two to the other four plus two is six. And then cover nine is basically cover six, but you flip the side. So you see that in cover nine, our cover four side is actually going to be the left side. Our cover two side is the right side. When you talk about cover six, it's completely the opposite. The cover four side is actually the right side and the cover two side is the left side. So let's go ahead here real quick and choose uh, maybe a cover nine. Because we have all these zones that are, you know, kind of the cover two-ish hooks, the vertical hook, the three rec. If I were to take Howley and man him up on the running back here, what actually will occur on this is you should see if the running back releases to the flat, you should see a push call here, meaning that uh, you're going to most likely see a point animation out of Howley, a point animation out of Edmonds, and then you should see the slot corner kind of jump the flat. So if we go ahead and kind of show you what that looks like, you see how if I were to try to throw quick to the flat, Derwin James, who was actually formerly in the vertical hook, actually took the running back straight to the flat. So again, here's the top down. Again, we don't have a flat zone on this play other than this guy that's in the cloud flat, but we really want that cloud flat to back up. So you really want him kind of playing corners. And what you see right here is, is, is quite neat because you have Howley pushing his assignment all the way across to Derwin, who's now able to jump that quick throw to the flat. And then in terms of how this defense works, you now have 49 becoming the vertical hook that Derwin used to be. And you now have this guy being the three rack hook that Tremaine Edmonds used to be. So that's how you end up with all this zone action to this side of the field, creating actually kind of like five on four to the bunch quad side of the formation, which is really, really valuable here as it pertains to this defense. Now, of course, that doesn't make this perfect. Anytime you're dealing with a, a defense like this, if you want to man up the running back with the quarter flat, my recommendation is to probably replace your flat zone, whether that's a hard flat or a curl flat. And then you can lurk on the backside safety to stay out of all these swapping assignments and just kind of be in a better position altogether. So, um, you know, let's say you run into somebody that wants to run like uh, you know, something like this, the pretty popular combo. You should still see the pushing and then you can kind of be ready for, you no know, all this action. Now, of course, the B receiver to the sideline is something that you should be aware of. If you guys are worried about the corner route over the top, you might actually apply this into a cover six instead of a cover nine, because again, what ends up occurring in a cover six is you've actually got the cover four side to the you know, the bunch side of the formation. So now in this situation, if we were to kind of play it, you man up Howley on the running back. Now you still have cover four over here. And then you could probably lurk on Harris, to be honest with you here. That way, if they end up, you know, being, you know, they attack the middle or they attack the corner. Now you're at least you're going to have your push call. And then you have, you know, a pretty good, pretty good coverage assignment here uh, where at least the running back is taken away immediately to the flat. You see right here how that looks. I mean, look how good this is. I mean, in terms of the AI, look at how you just created five on four here. You've got the four corners of your box around their four receivers. And then you got a guy sitting in the middle that can take away anything that's going to sit down on this. And then, of course, with my user, I would be kind of the low left side peeling back. You see right there, the post to the tight end 
had I been back in coverage in that, you know, left seam area, I would have been able to receive that post route. But otherwise, this is a completely shut down way of defending your bunch strong meta that a lot of players don't talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there, guys. That was a lot of information on how to kind of utilize the push call in general from a very basic two by two, the running back going to the flat to more advanced in terms of your matching style coverages, your cover six, cover nine, and you know, the meta that you see most often, which is the bunch strong. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. And if you guys are feeding for more, go over to gridirongameplans.gg. This is a concept I've been teaching for literally years on the website, and it's it's quite good against this current meta. So I hope that you guys can apply this, whether it's in over G or whatever defense you guys run and start getting a few more stops than what you were yesterday. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, this is Zan. Get the lab and good luck.